Hey everybody, welcome back to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. From this episode, I'm coming to you from Cedar City, Utah, where I'm performing in King Lear and The Tempest at the Utah Shakespeare Festival. So if you're in the neighborhood, come and check it out. Now let's go see the Tired Old Queen at the Movies, Steve Hayes. Now, Max, I thought you'd never get here. Why don't you come on in? Don't say dying out outside. You're going to be blacklisted. Do your work. Come on in. Come on in. Come in. Johnny, I love movies about making movies. So I decided to go to the source, and I chose Vincent Minnelli's Two Weeks in Another Town from the novel by Irwin Shaw, and starring Kirk Douglas, Edward G. Robinson, Claire Trevor, Dahlia Lavi, George Hamilton, and Rosanna Schettifino. Now, following the steps of Fellini's La Dolce Vita, Minnelli read Two Weeks in Another Town and thought, you know, I could make a movie maybe like The Bad and the Beautiful. He got his whole team together that had made The Bad and the Beautiful back in 1952. He got David Raxson to do the music. He got John Hausman to produce it. He got Charles Shee to write the screenplay who had won the Oscar for The Bad and the Beautiful. This movie has so many references in it to The Bad and the Beautiful. It's in the score. When Kirk Douglas goes, they watch clips from The Bad and the Beautiful. It, it pervades the whole movie. This movie was shot on location in Rome and it's gorgeous. It's all along the Via Veneto. It's it's that whole paparazzi. It's about movie companies in Rome that Fellini had done in La Dolce Vita. You really get a feel for that Italian cinema. And Kirk Douglas plays a washed up actor at the beginning of the movie. He's in an alcoholic in sanitarium. He's had a nervous breakdown. He's an Oscar winning actor. And Edward G. Robinson is Maurice Kruger, who is this old time movie director. Don't you want the best movie you can get? He sends him a, a telegram. He says, I'm over here with all these clowns and I'm writing to you, an actor who could do these scenes blindfolded. What are you doing? Get on a plane and get over here. So, you know, Kirk is, you know, recovering and he says, do you think I can do this? And his shrink says, I think you, we would think you've been ready to get out of here for a long time. Well, what makes you so sure? No, I didn't say I was sure. I said it was our opinion. I suppose you're wrong. Well, I hope we're not. So off he goes and he gets to Rome. And of course he's been on a wild goose chase. It's all about, this movie's all about showbiz screwing you. It's just from beginning to end, everybody gets screwed. I hated you when you were a star. You were arrogant, irresponsible. The most difficult client I ever had. Now that you're nothing, I still hate you. Kruger is directing a comeback movie because people think he's washed up because he's old. So he's got this young actor, Davy Drew, played by George Hamilton, who's sort of like a Warren Beatty slash James Dean bad boy guy, right? And Kruger's wife is played by Claire Trevor. And he, <laughs> Edward G. Robinson refers to her as my lawfully wedded nightmare. <laughs> and Claire Trevor never stops nagging him for a minute. Oh, yeah, you're off sleeping with all of the stars, aren't you? Well, I'll take you to the cleaners. You're not going to get away with anything because I'm going to take you for every dime you've got. Every dime, Clara? You're slipping used to be every dollar. <laughs> She's just ruthless. She's horrible to him. She's nagging him all the time. With your sense of humor, you'll probably find this amusing. Kirk Douglas's character's Achilles heel is his ex Carlotta, who's played by Sid Charisse. She goes from one man to the next. She knows she has him wrapped around her finger. She's always sleeping with the most wealthy man in the place. This is essentially a sordid story. Kirk starts a love affair with George Hamilton's Italian girlfriend, played by Dahlia Lavi, who is very much in the style of Sophia Loren at that time. You know, she has that eye makeup and she has the deep voice like this. And she's gorgeous. I'm glad you weren't killed. I'm glad you're here. Kruger has a heart attack, and he says, Unfinished. Because it's got to be done in a certain amount of time. Well, then by who? By me, the Kruger way. What do you think I was doing in our last seven pictures? Walking in my sleep? I'll take care of Ticino. You take care of Kruger. So he accepts the job, and he buries himself into directing this movie. And he's really good at it. He's directing this movie. He gets the kid to come out of it and to work. And they're getting the, the movie done on time. And all of a sudden, Kruger calls him into the hospital room. And Claire Trevor's there. And she says, you're trying to step over Kruger and walk on him. He's in the hospital and you're stealing his movie. You dirty, lying, ungrateful, double-crossing crook. 
You that he dragged out of a Broadway gutter and saved from the nut house, trying to steal his picture. And Edward G. Robinson says, I want you on the next plane. I want you to get out of here. I don't care about you. I want this movie. It's a Kruger picture. Who do you think you are, anyway? And, you know, and he says, I, I just did it for you. You know, I did it because I love you. You made my career. Yeah, what career is it? You drank yourself. You let Carlotta walk all over you, and you're lush. You're nothing but a lush. You know, so the music gets up, and then David Raxon's score is terrific in this. Phone call for me. How a lot of happens to call at that time. So he goes off and they have this wild, they go to this wild orgy, which a lot of it they cut out. You know, They get into this car and he's drunk and he gets in the car and heads down the road. Now, do you remember in The Bad and the Beautiful, that scene when he breaks up with Lana Turner and she gets hysterical in the car and the car's out of control? <laughs> Well, they do the exact same thing in this, except since Cherise jumps in the car with them and she's screaming with them and hitting him in the car is going out of control. <laughs> get to the bottom of the hill and he drives a car under a fountain and the fountain covers them both in water. Oh, it's so, it's just so erotic. It's great. This movie has all of the Minnelli touches. It's got the color, the cinematography. He was a production person, you know, in his early career and it shows. It's gorgeous to look at. Leslie Uggams, who I had the great honor of being in Gypsy with when she played Mama Rose, told me that this was quite an adventure and that Minnelli stuck up for her when they made this movie and she was she really liked that. And she makes this one, this was done during the time she was on Mitch Miller and she was all over the country. And she makes this appearance and she sings this song called Don't Blame Me, which is sung in The Bad and the Beautiful by Peggy King, who's supposed to be Judy Garland in the party sequence. And they... To duplicate that, they brought in Leslie Uggams and had her sing it in this. And she said, I can't believe you saw this movie. I said, I love this movie and I loved you in it, you know. Blame all your charms. It's gaudy. It's splashy. It's Italian. It's Rome. It's that whole La Dolce Vita thing. I think you're going to love Kirk Douglas, Edward G. Robinson. Sid Charisse, Claire Trevor, George McCready, George Hamilton, Dahlia Lobby, Rosanna Scarafino, and Vincent Minnelli's version of Irwin Shaw's Two Weeks in Another Town. Let's all go to the... He said, I'd spend nights where they, they'd call me and then they'd never use me. So I just drove in a sports car that they provided me around Rome all night long. I just drove around Rome and picked up people and had... No, just drove around Rome. <laughs>